And now, my friends, let us welcome our guest speaker for this evening. Our special guest is an international development banker and a financial expert. He is the president of the Management Association of the Philippines, or MAP, and the former president of the University of the Philippines from 2011 to 2017. He is also a former CEO of the Institute of Corporate Directors. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give a warm round of applause, a warm welcome to the Secretary of the Department of Trade and Industry, Secretary Alfredo E. Pascual. Let me greet Israel Ambassador Ilan Flus, the Israel Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines President, Yorai Ofek. Also, my friend, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry President, George Barcelon. Uh, other guests, <clears throat> a pleasant evening to all. I was about to say that George and I were uh, judges uh, last week, you know, late, we, this weekend, isn't it? Uh, we were judging the Bilibini Pilipinas beauty pageant. <clears throat> uh, it was, uh, we, got, we went beyond the allocated time to decide because uh, the contestants were all uh, very promising. I'm honored to be with you tonight and share relevant key priorities of the Department of Trade and Industry as the Philippines moves towards transformation, economic transformation. Many of you know the Philippines as you have built your businesses here and taken part in the endeavors of Israel and the Philippines in commerce and trade. Our North Star is now an economic transformation that builds back better. This is how we envision economic transformation, to grow the, our economy and develop globally competitive industries that support quality of life and shared prosperity for all Filipinos. DTI is embarking on a strategy driven by science, technology, and innovation, or STI. Uh, in fact, when I got to DTI, there were many plans already, but I told my colleagues the time has come not just to do more plans, but to execute the existing plans. An STI-driven trade and industry sector enables businesses in the country to embrace innovation and pursue digitalization. Such direction is especially relevant during this time. While well, the Philippines has shown remarkable growth amid the pandemic, our industries continue to contend with growing competition from our neighbors in domestic and export markets. The technologies that emerge from the fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0 compel businesses in our country to adapt to shifting global market dynamics. As part of the government, DTI will leverage the potential and synergies of partnerships, including cooperation with Israel on trade and industry to further move toward economic transformation. Israeli investors and businesses may continue to find the Philippines a suitable destination for investments, a source of a talented, sizable, and supportive workforce, and an enabling environment with a robust regime for strategic trade management and intellectual property, as well as data protection regime. The complementarity between Israel and the Philippines is a crucial factor that encourage representatives of our two countries to sign in June 
2022, this year, as uh, mentioned by the good ambassador, the Philippine-Israel Investment Promotion and Protection Agreement. As we complete the ratification of this agreement, let us together, together, our two countries, move forward in advancing our investment relations and making trade and investments more streamlined between the two of us. Integral to DTI's trust to enable businesses to survive and thrive through innovation and digitalization, we will upgrade, upskill, and upsize micro, small, and medium enterprises, or MSMEs. To do this, DTI will promote digitalization and digital transformation among MSMEs. Towards such a goal, there are opportunities for the Philippines to learn from and leverage the experiences of Israel as Silicon Valley too, especially in enabling MSMEs to have a mobile presence and access to digital and online platforms that will help their businesses. There may also be opportunities for Israel to invest in technological capability and infrastructure that can boost the upscaling of small businesses. Like, Isra like in Israel, whose majority of companies are small and medium enterprises, MSMEs are the backbone of the Philippine economy. MSMEs comprise 99.5% of about 1 million registered business establishments in our country. They, they give jobs to 63% of the workforce and contribute to almost half of our gross domestic product. For MSMEs to continue to grow and develop and graduate from micro to small, from small to large, uh, small to medium and medium to large, we must continue to be responsive to their constraints to access finance, technology, and the market. Indeed, we work with other government agencies and partners in developing the private sector to address such constraints. But we will be especially keen on cooperation for solutions to such constraints with partners from Israel. DTI will further implement STI-driven programs with another government agency, the Department of Science and Technology, or DOST. With STI-driven strategies and programs, MSMEs will be better positioned to grow, upscale, and meet challenging market demands. DTI finds digital transformation vital for SME, MSMEs to operate efficiently, reduce costs, earn profits, and improve their competitiveness. We seek opportunities for MSMEs in the Philippines to integrate into the domestic value chains and to penetrate multinational companies' global value chains. Still, aligned with DTI's STI-driven strategy, we are establishing the Center for Artificial Intelligence Research and the Industry 4.0 Pilot Factory. These two centers can drive development of innovative products and services using the latest technologies like artificial intelligence. The R&D centers I'm referring to can help solve problems and issues that affect the operations and competitiveness of growing enterprises. The Center of AI Research is central to world-class R&D activities and will be instrumental in establishing the branding and credibility of the Philippines in AI. The center will be established as a public-private partnership. We're bringing in uh, about five major business groups to join us in uh, DTI to put up the center for artificial intelligence research. On the other hand, the Industry 4.0 Pilot Factory, 
otherwise known as digital twin. I'm sure you've heard of this, or you, you're doing it already in your country, will host demonstrations and case applications of Industry 4.0 technologies for enterprises, especially MSMEs. The pilot factory will facilitate industry access to advanced manufacturing technologies, including, but not limited to robotics, intelligent manufacturing systems, and cyber physical systems. This will also provide the most advanced industrial, experimental, and demonstration platforms, like uh, simulations before actual implementation. And they will deliver training to enterprises from selected industries. Through similar initiatives, Israel, which is at the, for at the forefront in terms of innovative capacity, and the Philippines, a developing country that has set innovation as its national priority, may explore enforcing their collaboration to pave the way for groundbreaking technologies and products. Another opportunity for Israel and the Philippines to work together lies in DTI's strategic priority to reconfigure the Philippine export sectors through industry clusters and position the manufacturing sector in the country in areas where the Philippines has strategic advantages. DTI will reconfigure its uh, export sector to prioritize the industrial sectors in three clusters. One, industrial manufacturing and transport cluster, which consists of aerospace, such as aircraft interiors and maintenance, repair, and overhaul of aircraft, automotive, particularly electric vehicles, and the usual semiconductors. Second cluster, technology, media, and telecommunication. This refers to digital services, the IB, BPM, this is the business process outsourcing, a growing industry in the Philippines, artificial intelligence and data analytics, cybersecurity, hyperscale data centers, and creative industries. Third cluster, health and life sciences. This will consist of biopharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and healthcare services. The industrial manufacturing and transport cluster provides the Philippines with upgrading opportunities in aerospace, automotive, and semiconductors. To consider Israel's advanced industries, technologies, and products in aerospace, smart transportation, and semiconductors to help us expand and develop this, uh, what we call IMT cluster. The Philippines already hosts the number one aircraft interiors company in the world, Collins Aerospace and the world's leading aircraft MRO company, maintenance, repair, and overhaul of aircraft company, the Lufthansa Technique. Israel's advantage and experience in participating in aerospace global value chain, including aircraft maintenance, repair, and overhaul, is an area we can learn from. As automotive companies shift from all to all electric vehicles, so EVs, manufacturing, the switch will be a primary change in the automotive gl global value chain. DTI is keen on opportunities for the Philippines to enter the EV global value chain in particular. Aware of Israel's advancement in smart transportation, we aim to adapt relevant technologies eventually, such as those for producing and developing pollution reduction and green vehicles, IT in vehicles, and precision metal components. Finally, the semiconductor industry will benefit from the recent boost in digitalization amid the COVID-19 pandemic. But outsource semiconductor assembly and test, or OSAT, a segment in the Philippines is vulnerable to disruptive technologies. Increasing skills to undertake R&D functions could help us improve business for 
outsource semiconductor assembly and test companies in the Philippines. As the Israeli government encourages international research and development collaboration, we hope Filipino firms can work with partners from Israel to enhance our potential or the potential of these companies in OSAT. The common thread among all these three IMT sectors is the electronics and electrical parts and components global value chains. We aim to attract foreign direct investments, including from Israel, to design capacity so that more value added is captured and manufacturing is expanded in our country. DTI will continue to develop our country into a center of excellence in the design of semiconductors and strengthen its electronics sector. The second cluster, Technology, Media, and Telecommunications, or TMT cluster, will provide the Philippines opportunities from the digitalization of services, a consequence of living in the new normal. The key trend in the BPO sector moving forward is the switch from cost saving to value addition. The next decade will also witness the BPO segment from a cross-cutting contributor to the competitiveness and efficiency of other global value chains it supports. Artificial intelligence-based cloud analytics and enterprise resource planning will continue trending while working from home will be here to stay for many of us. The new development in the Philippines is the passage of the creative industry law. And we want and we are committed to make to implement this law and and bring the creative industry in the Philippines to the global stage. And this will fall under this cluster technology, media and telecommunications. This is good news for Israeli investors, many of whom hold equity in enterprises in the Philippine Economic Zone Authority, or PESA, for projects in call center services, IT, BPM, and BPO. That 82% of BPOs and shared services centers in the Philippines serve global markets is a positive attribute that can be leveraged by target, targeted policies and initiatives to increase the country's participation in the TMT global value chain cluster. With the pandemic, interest in data centers has also increased globally. The Philippines is now seen as the destination of new data centers being established worldwide. DTI and the Board of Investments have placed hyperscalers and data centers as top priorities in its investment promotion. We are looking at hyperscale industry as the next growth engine of the country. Just last week, we launched the Jupiter uh, cable system that connects the US to Japan onto the Philippines. And this will provide a very big super highway for digital data. And that can be the basis to support hyperscalers in the Philippines. Its capacity will be, I think, almost equal to the existing uh, cables connecting the Philippines to other countries. Investors and businesses, sorry, I hope you see the potential, our friends from Israel, and you can hopefully uh, commit, plan and commit to avail of this potential. Investors and businesses, including those from Israel, can rely on strong government support, of course, implemented through a menu of theory-specific incentives when they do invest in hyperscale industry of the Philippines. The government further provides robust intellectual property and data privacy protection, as I've already mentioned. We cannot ignore that with COVID-19 pandemic at the root of the current global economic stress. The health and life science cluster plays a strategic security role 
opening income generating opportunities in all countries, including the Philippines. Over the next decade, manufacturing medicines faster and cheaper will continue to be the mantra of multinational companies. The sector will also witness smaller, innovative, more agile pharmaceutical companies taking a more critical role in bringing medicines, including generic kinds, to the market. As pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and healthcare services move to be more integrated, this will facilitate emergence of an health and life sciences cluster in the Philippines. Finally, DTI continues to prioritize the development of an enabling environment for investment in export-oriented enterprises. We build on the recent policy reforms, particularly the amendments to the Foreign Investment Act, the Public Service Act, and the Retail, the Retail Trade Liberalization Act. We capitalize on the corporate recovery and tax incentive for Enterprises Act, or CREATE, which provides tier-specific incentives for investors. And we continue to push for immediate ratification of trade agreements, including RCEP. DTI will work towards reducing regulatory burdens by streamlining and digitalizing institutional and regulatory requirements and expanding the Ease of Doing Business Act in coordination with the Department of Information and Communications Technology. DTI will further support the e-government initiatives to digitalize the operations of the government, the whole government, using standard platforms so that they can be more efficient in dealing with domestic and foreign businesses. On another front, DTI will implement to foster greater investment and competition in logistics and connectivity services. Otherwise, we will not be able to move our products. Increase infrastructure investment in physical and digital infrastructure, power and logistics, and modern and efficient air, land, and sea infrastructure will reduce transport costs and boost industry competitiveness and aggregate productivity. To conclude, our roadmap to economic transformation, particularly in investment, trade, and industry, is characterized by an understanding of the need to be responsive to business opportunities and by an urge to let science, technology, and innovation drive our growth. Let us strengthen the collaboration between companies from the Philippines and Israel. And I assure you, we can make it happen in the Philippines. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Secretary Pasqual. Um, Secretary, may I please ask um, for you to join me here on stage once again as we call the ICCP President, Mr. Yorai Ofek, to hand over the plaque of appreciation from ICCP to Secretary Pasqual. Our plaque re reads, the Israel Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines presents this plaque of appreciation to Honorable Alfredo E. Pascual, Secretary of the Department of Trade and Industry, in recognition of his valuable time and expertise as the guest speaker during the ICCP's 26th GMM, Philippine Roadmap to Economic Recovery, given this third day of August 2022 in Dusitani, Makati. Once again, a round of applause for our gentlemen here on stage and yes I would like to request for both of you to please stay here on stage with me and we would like to request Ambassador Floss to join all of the gentlemen here um, so he can also receive a plaque of appreciation from the ICCP.
And the plaque reads, the Israel Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines presents this plaque of appreciation to His Excellency Ambassador Elon Floss, em Embassy of Israel, Manila Secretary of the Department of Trade and Industry, in recognition of his valuable time as a special guest during the ICCP's 26th GMM Philippine Roadmap to Economic Recovery, given this third day of August 2022 in Dusit Tani Makati. Once again, gentlemen, my please request for you to remain on stage for a photo op. Yes, as we call in our directors, we would like to request Itamar Guerrero, David Alephant, Marge Barro, Michael Makatangay, and Arsenio Barcelona to please come up here on stage. And uh, for our friends in the audience, we are right now distributing the glasses of wine. So you would like everyone to please take a hold of your wine glasses as we prepare for a toast. All right, and now we'd like to ask Mr. Ofek to please lead the toast. as we distribute our wine glasses to our gentlemen here on stage. So everyone, please take a hold of your wine glasses. And after the program is over, we will be asking if we can have refills. <laughs> I would like to toast for a strong, successful, sustainable re business relationship between Israel and the Philippines and the current administration. Thank you very much. Lechaim. All right, cheers indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause, please. And thank you so much, Ambassador Floss, Secretary Lopez, and the ICCP Board of Directors headed by ICCP President Yorai Ofek. All right, now we are going to be having a photo shoot on the stage. Of course, we want to document this momentous occasion. There you go. Can I have another round of applause for the gentlemen on stage, please, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> 